Hey everyone, it's Adele and April from Just Say Scrap and we are here with Technique Tuesday. So today we are going to do a few more watercolor techniques. We're going to dive in um, and we're going to show you a few things that you might not have thought to do with your watercolors and your watercolor brushes. So, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. It's going to be fun. Woohoo. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so today we are going to be diving into some more watercolor techniques. Um, and we have our watercolor paints here. As you can see, I've never actually opened mine. Um, so I'm gonna open them right now. So first things first, whenever I have a new product, I always put my name on it. So when we are working at retreats, people will know that it's mine because a lot of people have these um, have the exact same tools. So I like to put my name on it. Second, what we like to do when we are working with our watercolors is we like to label them. So with a smaller Sharpie, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to label one through, I forget how many there are on here, but you'll see. I think it's like one through 36 or something like that. Um, but one of our customers actually had the brilliant idea to also label this. And that'll help you when you're opening up the tray of what colors go where. So I'm just gonna do that quickly with my Sharpie. All right, so I was correct with that 36. Um, so then what I'm gonna do, I'll show you the beginning. I need to get a better Sharpie. Um, this one's starting to run out. I'll show you what I do inside. So we then start in here and we label all of these. The Sharpie's working, so I'm just going to keep going. Perfect. A few of them got caught on little plastic things in there, but that's okay. So we've got those labeled and they're matched up here. So now one of the things that we like to do when we are um, mixing or using our watercolors is first we have our watercolor brushes here and this one is actually not full at all. So I'm going to go fill this, but this does have some um, water in it. You can see the liquid moving around in there. So I'm going to fill this one up and I'll be right back. All right. So that is now filled up with some water and I've got my colors here. But before we start, I'm going to grab out some watercolor paper. Um, so this is our distressed watercolor cardstock from Tim Holtz. And what's nice about this paper is there's a side that looks a little bit more um, distressed and kind of has a texture to it, but the other side is completely flat. So you can get two different color looks here. I always like using the texture side, but you can also use this side as well. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to splatter paint with um, our colors here which um, we usually do with like a shimmer brush or something like that, but you can totally also do it with the water brush. And I'll show you a few more things. So I'm actually gonna take my Versa mat away because we don't need this because we've got our all-purpose mat underneath. And like I have said over the past few videos, um, I've actually kept my Versa mat underneath or my all-purpose mat underneath my Versa mat because it makes it so easy when I need to do something with texture paste or anything like that um, I can actually even just move my Versa map over on my crafting space, do texture paste here, and here's my surface just to do that I'm working with. So it's actually been like the best thing that we figured out is to keep your all-purpose mat on your desk the entire time. So I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to cut it down. So I'm going to make a four by four square. And I just wanted something smaller that could either go into a flip flap or something that could go on a card or a page layout. Um, four by fours are so versatile that you can literally use them on anything. So if you're trying a new technique or something, maybe try it on a four by four because then you'll be able to use it easier on a different um, layout or something. So I am totally a pink girl. Um, so number 18 is like one of my favorite colors, 14, 18, 13, 7, like this whole area. So I'm going to work with that a little. Um, first, we are going to make sure I have the distress side up. And we are going to take our um, water brush here. I always have a paper towel around um, just so I can wipe things off. And as you can see, this one's been used and abused, but I can just keep using it. So we want to make sure that the brush is completely clean. So you see if I squeeze on the brush that there is liquid that comes out the top. That just makes sure that we're clean and then I can set that aside. So what I want to do here actually 
is I am going to, I'm going to do this in two different ways. So I'm going to just take this and I'm going to put my liquid right into my color here. And if you can see on this side, you see the numbers, but they're obviously um, in a mirror image to you. I'm going to just take this and I'm going to go right into 18. This is going to help me um, kind of determine which one of these it goes into. And I like having it here because I can add more liquid into this, make this more of a liquid um, area if I wanted it more liquidy instead of just like a solid um, paint. But I can also, if you really want, you can wipe things right out of the lid too. So I usually leave a little bit in here just for future, but I wanted to show you that you can clean the lid as well. So I'm going to get, I'm going to pretty much saturate the brush in paint color. I'm going to do that here. And I've got a lot of color on the brush. I'm actually going to hold my hand out like this for this one. And I'm going to tap the brush on my hand instead of tapping the brush itself. And you see how you get those dots. So if I do it harder, you're going to get um, more splatters. If I do it lighter, you're not going to get as much. But do you see how beautiful just tapping that goes? And since there's water on the brush, it really did transfer well onto here. And that's why we also do it on our all-purpose mat, because it will splatter outward as well. But isn't that just a beautiful design that we have right away? So this is something that's really pretty. And then you can just remember just... Um, Use that water in your brush to clean off your brush. I saturated a lot, so there's a lot of color still coming out. Um, but isn't that just so pretty? And this watercolor paper really does absorb the um, color and the water right away. And it will make it more vibrant. And it actually won't like start to curl up like it will on White Daisy. Another thing to note if you're trying to figure out between watercolor paper or White Daisy. Um, I know this one has texture on it, but if you have other other paper do you see how vibrant the white daisy is versus the watercolor the watercolor paper is actually not as bright as our white daisy colored paper so that's another way if you need to determine what kind of paper you are actually using so i actually really really like this one i was going to add another color to it but i think i'm going to put this to the side and keep it as it is so i'm going to make one more i'm going to use our photo trimmer here just to make this into a four by four I always keep these pieces what I do is I just stick them right back into my watercolor so I've got them for next time and this time to get a little bit of a different technique I'm actually going to take my watercolor brush and I'm making sure that it's there's no color in it and I'm going to wet it a lot and I'm actually going to wet the entire paper first so I am just wetting this surface completely. It is watercolor paper. It will soak in, so you don't want to wait too long. But I am wetting that surface. Now I'm going to take my um, small round brush instead of my medium round that I was using. And this is starting to warp slightly, but once again, it is watercolor paper, so it does not warp as much as any others out there. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take 21. I'm going to mix that up get that color on my brush here and I'm gonna do the same thing but because the paper was wet prior to do you see that there are some spots that are actually um oops <laughs> some spots that are actually hitting the paper and then kind of going outward so it's not as vibrant as the last one was take a little bit more um I am also using a smaller brush so it's a smaller surface a little bit but do you see how um, it's a lot less in your face and it's a lot more subtle than the last one. What you can also do with this is I can take a little bit of color on here and I can just go down with my brush into the water that's already on my paper and I'll get those bigger dots. So I'm going to just scoot this water around a little bit. But do you see that? How you can kind of just create those bots that are a little bit bigger. And you have such a subtle watercolor splatter then. Totally not as much as it was last time. The more water you add, the less in your face it's going to be, um, just in general. But isn't that really pretty? So to put the two together... I'm gonna clean off my surface a little bit first. This 
So you can totally see the difference between the two. This is the one that um, had the water actually on it first. And then this is the one that I just went right down with my, um, right down with my brush. So what I'm doing here is there were actually the, I missed some of the edges of this paper. So I'm just kind of working it out because I can see that some of the watercolor wants to follow the water pattern. So I'm just making sure that it goes off the paper. They give you a completely different look as well. Um, and then just make sure you keep cleaning off your water brush as you're getting done. So that is our Technique Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed a little bit more about our watercolors, but we will definitely be back with some more watercolor techniques in the future. And that's Technique Tuesday. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed. But as you can see, this is actually almost fully dry and it really hasn't warped at all. Um, so sorry for the shaky hands. My allergies are bothering me and I took my nebulizer. <laughs> um, but you can see that it really hasn't warped at all. Um, and it's only wet in like that one small area still. But you can kind of see the difference of the two textures. So this was it before it was wet and this is it when we completely wet the paper. Um, so you can totally see, you can do so much with watercolors, completely change them around. Um, and we have a lot of other fun techniques that are also gonna be coming out with our watercolors, right Mo? Yeah. So we're gonna, say it, what, sorry? I said yes, they're awesome. <laughs> yes, so there's so much that you can do with them. You don't just have to color with them. Um, they're great for making backgrounds and a bunch of things like that. So we're stepping our toes into the watercolors <laughs> right now. Um, but we will be back next Tuesday with some more things. Um, and also remember that May 22nd to the 23rd is our virtual retreat with the... Um, you are enough paper, which is absolutely gorgeous. It is on back order. However, um, I believe they're getting it in very, very soon. So you can still order it. They're making it orderable except for the eight, six by eight album. Nope, that, that actually is now on back order. Oh, great. Okay, cool. So that's going back in now too. Um, so you can do, place an order for anything and it will go on back order and then they will send it out to you. Um, so if you wanted to know what we are using exactly, you can check out our... Um, Facebook page or our blog and we'll tell you right there um, and yeah that's about it so we hope that you guys are enjoying National Scrapbooking Month and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye! Bye. No just exit out of the thing and then uh, come back in. I'm leaving the meeting then. Yeah and then come back. Oh, by myself. <laughs> Yay! I don't know what that means. This Are way? you waiting outside for me, Brendan? Well, um, and it is. It's a magic band text tone. <laughs>